target environment. We can install and execute benchmarks. And finally, we can retrieve and store the results. Well, um, with this result that we have uh, stored in our uh, artist repository, we can um, uh, we can find the most fitting solution during the migration uh, process uh, during the migration process for the application. Uh, some information about the architecture of the benchmarking tool. Here are the main here are the main components of uh, the benchmarking. Uh, so uh, we have the, the GUI. The user through the GUI can set the conditions of the test. He can, uh, the, he can select uh, the workload, uh, the cloud provider, and uh, the configuration of the workloads. Uh, this information is passed to the benchmarking controller, which is the main component of the uh, benchmarking tool. And it is responsible for raising the cloud uh, resources and executing um, the tests. Um, the benchmark controller is based on Apache Cloud project um, because uh, in order to support uh, different uh, provider cloud providers frameworks. Well, um, in an external repository, we have the tests, the executable tests. So once the tests are installed uh, on the target environment, uh, then the benchmark, uh, the, work, the benchmark workload setups are transferred to the target uh, environment, and uh, then the execution of the benchmarking uh, starts. Uh, when uh, the execution finishes, uh, then the results are transferred back to the artist repository. Here are the main components that I have already told about. Here are the benchmark tools that are, are included in the benchmarking tool. We have the uh, YCSB, uh, which covers the database feed. Also we have data classic, which covers the web application feed. Also, we have file system uh, for um, okay. also we have file types for file system, and finally, the app for Java-based applications. It's very important to mention that um, uh, the selection of benchmarks is, is based on the ability to have application-level workloads. Uh, currently, uh, the connectors that we have developed are for the, are for Amazon EC2, OpenStack, Azure, Open, and Flexion. Uh, for all these cloud providers, um, the execution and the retrieval of the results are automated. Uh, but for the last three providers, the creation uh, and the destroy of the target environment is still manual. Well, uh, in order to express in a better way the ability of uh, the performance ability of uh, cloud environments, we have implemented uh, uh, a metric which is called uh, service efficiency. Uh, by using this metric, we can rank cloud services, uh, and uh, this ranking is based on specific uh, user preferences such as cost, uh, performance, or deviation. Well, and by using this uh, metric, we can answer a simple question. For example, uh, a user, if a user has a streaming application and he wants a cheap service uh, with, uh, a low, low, uh, with a low workload, then um, he can have the answer by using uh, this metric. Oops, sorry. Here is, oh, here is the formula of the metric. Uh, uh, this formula includes workload aspects of a specific test, cost aspects of the selecting offering, and performance aspects for a given workload. Uh, well, S is the scaling factor for normalization. We have that for work workload metric. F keep, it's, it is for KPI or cost metric. And finally, we have the weight factor. Uh, if someone wants um, uh, 
to have a, a chip service, then he'll have to, uh, or he is interested in the cost of the service, then he'll have to increase the weight factor.
Well, after the cloud provider configuration, we go to the test directory. Still running, but uh, just to 
will say that here we can see that the, the workload was Tomcat and the performance time was 39,770 milliseconds. So by this process we can have the performance result for the benchmarking uh, uh, process, for the cloud provider, sorry. That was the process of benchmarking. So I think that I have finished. Do you have any questions? Okay, yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot to say. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what was presented by Athanasia, uh, it is part of the exercise number one that we are going to have uh, after the next uh, demonstration. So if you want, again, you have a look at the website and uh, check the information that is there. And now we're going to, uh, to the second demonstration, which is uh, part of the second exercise we are going to have. Yeah, so this, this exercise for the, <coughs> the demonstration we're going to do is for the Reverse engineering for engineering that I showed before the horseshoe model. So I will show some steps in the reverse engineering and some of them in the forward engineering. Uh, so in order for you to be able to follow the demonstration, I don't know if you have downloaded. The Eclipse, the Eclipse instance that is uh, compatible with your machine. So we have here one for Windows 64 or Windows 32, Linux or uh, Apple computers. So please download the one that you that is suitable for your machine, and you also need to to have Java, of course. So ah, and finally, you also need to to download the workspace. Okay, that you're gonna load in the Eclipse. In the, in Eclipse, in, in the workspace, we have already all the projects that that are used. Okay, so I'm going to open my my Eclipse. Of this class. 
So what this tool does is it, it takes a, a library, okay, a library in Java that is composed of annotations, and it's going to discover to create a UML profile which is the equivalent to the to the Java annotations. Uh, in the workspace we have we have a project which is called JPA2. Okay, this is the the JPA library of Java. You can you can have a look at it here. Uh, so we have integrated in a, in, in Eclipse uh, a launcher okay, for our tool, which is the model discovery tool, the UML, UML profile discovery. Okay, you can see in the slide how to, how to run this. It's here, how you can run it. And then what we get... Okay. It's a UML profile. Okay, this is a UML, UML profile. This is no, it's not a class diagram or anything. It's a profile. So if we get into the into this package, persistent package. Okay, this is equivalent to this uh, the persistent package of the Java library. And here we can see how many stereotypes have been discovered. For instance, I don't know. Let's have a look at the entity. One. Yeah. So here we have stereotype called entity. This one has been discovered, and it has been discovered specifically from this class here, entity class. Okay. The enti this entity class is defined in an annotation that can be later be used in in Java applications, and this is how this annotation is defined. So therefore, this. Model here. That's it, that this is the output of, of, the, of the Jam tool. This is a model that contains a UML profile that can be used by applications. Okay, and it has been discovered from the Java library. Okay, this is important for the reverse engineering process, which I haven't I haven't started yet. Okay, so now the application that we're going to reverse engineer. Well, and this is the a snapshot of a graphical snapshot of the JPA profile that has been discovered. Okay? You can see there several stereotypes which are extending the meta class operation here of the UML meta meta model. But here are some stereotypes that extend the meta class type. So the entity one that I have shown is here. And now we start the reverse the reverse engineer process for the Petzl application. The Petzl application is is an online service where you can go and you can select some pet, pets to buy. Okay, you put some pets in the shopping cart and then you can pay and, and get your pets. So the idea, as I said before, is to use Modisco to obtain a structural class diagram from the application. Okay, so we, we have the code and we obtain a class diagram. Also, so this is done by uh, it, it's done by Modisco, okay, the Modisco tool. But what we do is we combine Modisco with the Jam tool because also in the Pesto there are uh, defined some annotations. So what we're going to obtain out of the Java code of the Pesto is a class diagram as well as a profile. So we have to execute the tool as it's written here. But what I'm interested in is the output that you can see here. As I said, we get the class diagram and the profile. The profile is not going to be used later on, but let me just have a quick look at it. This profile is obtained out of the annotations, okay, which are in the pet store, as I said before. And let me just show an example. Okay, so this is the code of the pet store application. Only three packages contain annotations, okay? So we can go I can go to the constraint one for instance. And in here we can see that as an example there is a, a stereotype created that is called login and this is equivalent to this uh, annotation here. This is the definition of an annotation to be used later on in a Java application. Okay at the same time we can see how the definition of this annotation contains some annotations. 
Okay, these annotations are defined elsewhere. So now you can see the profile how such annotations. Can put it here. We can see how these annotations are also present in the model. Okay, these are the node null, size, target, rotation, etc. These annotations are defined in other profiles, but our jam tool is able to recognize them and include them in the model. Okay, so as I said, we obtain on the one hand the profile, and on the other hand, we get the class diagram. This is. Let me close this one. This is the structural representation. I mean, well, the, yeah, the structural part of the of the textual application. Okay, so we don't we don't have behavior here into account, but only the structure. We can see how we have one package per each. Um, for each package in the Java application. So this basically, this model represents a big class diagram containing all the classes, all the, all the relationship, all the attributes of the application. Also, these are all the profiles that are used within the Java application, where one of them is the JPA2 profile, okay? Let me also point out that with the JAM uh, tool that I mentioned before, we have reverse engineered this uh, JPA, JPA uh, la, um, uh, library in Java, but if you go to these publications, you will see that in the evaluation we have extracted, I don't know, like 20 libraries, something like that, and they are present in, present in, this, in this link here. So let's see if I can go there. Yeah, so this also the Eclipse link, the Findbox, Hibernate, these are all, these are all human profiles that have been obtained automatically from Java, Java libraries, okay? So then you could then uh, define a model, Java model, human model, where, and, to, and use one of these profiles, you can reference one of these profiles. Okay, so with this step, by obtaining the class diagram of the application, I have started the reverse engineer process. So, from the, okay, this is the overall picture that I'm going to describe now. So, from the source code, we have already a new ML class diagram. Okay, a new ML class diagram that can be huge if the application is very big. So, now the first thing we want to do is to focus only, I said that we are going to focus on the persistency layer because we want to change the, the technology underneath. So the first thing to do is to out of this out of this model that can be as big as the application. We want to focus only on the domain part. So for this, we apply the so-called slicing techniques. Now these are in this project here, in the last project. And for these, for the other two tools, uh, they were integrated in the contextual menu. So they were here, but for these ones, we have prepared some configuration. Uh, files on, uh, that can be directly executed. Okay, so we can run this simply as runners and we select the, the first option. Okay, uh, here in the, in the presentation, I explain which are the, so this is the, the first step, okay, uh, in the understanding process. So out of the very big, potentially big class diagram, we're going to take a domain model. We're going to obtain a domain model. How, we, how do we do this? We know that the, uh, all the classes that belong to the domain model, they are annotated with uh, stereotypes that belong to the JPI, to the li JPI library. At the same time, these stereotypes, they have been uh, reverse engineered, so we know which one they are. So what we are doing in this step is to recognize all those classes and relationship that have annotations that belong to the JPI. Okay, so what we do is we take as input the class diagram that I showed before, and we produce as output a simplified class diagram that only contains the domain model. So if we execute it, we obtain as output this model here. Okay, and I can show you that this is a simplification of this class diagram, so we can go we can go to the model. And these models that I'm showing 
always the first thing is the model and then the, the other stuff are being used by the model, they are being referenced. If there are other models that are being referenced by the models. So we can see here, okay, increase the size. Okay, well, before we had many packages, now only the domain package has been automatically selected. And here we can see several classes. One second, because I think this model is not totally correct. I put here in the, in the website that there was small bug, okay, because the model that is produced uh, sometimes is not the proper one, so I have the proper one here. Let me just drag it onto the... Just this one. So I want to show you all the profiles as well. So as I said, this is a platform-specific model. Okay, there are still some uh, many things related to the te to the underlying technology represented in terms of uh, of stereotypes. Okay, and annotations. So what we get is a, a slicing of the of the whole application. So we get the, in this case the main model classes such as, well, for our application, we have customer product, order category, etc. And we have the relationship between them. So now the next step, we want to obtain a platform-independent model. Okay, so we want to get rid of all the annotations specific for JPA or for validation, which is another profile used by the pet store. So we want to get rid of all the technology specific annotations, okay, and so that we get a platform dependent model. So for this we execute the second step, which is the second configuration file, and obtain as output. Here there are some differences between these two, such as the association. We can see how some compositions have appeared, and this is because this model is also refined uh, according to the to the notations. Okay, so for instance, the reason why there is no composition here, but it's here, it's because of these notations. In, in this model, these annotations specify that this is going to be a composition, but when we get rid of the notation, we need to change the type of the association into a composition one. Okay, and, and the, the cardinality is, is appropriately set due to this notation here. And we can see also how the, well, the identifier is served and the, and the composition and the, and the precise multiplicity. So now the next step would be to go back, so I'm sorry, back, to go forward, I mean, to go down again, and now to put uh, things specific to the technology in the cloud. Okay, for this, we're going to use the Objectify profile, which is this one. Uh, so this has uh, specific concepts that are used in the Kiberi data store of, of Google App Engine through the Objectify API. Okay, such as well, we also have here one certain call entity, another one called cache. We have one called embed, etc. Uh, for this, we will execute the, the, or the, set, the first step, sorry. And as we can see here, we take as input the platform independent model that was generated before, and now we are going to take a platform specific model for the objective fiber.
So this is the model we obtain now. So if we compare these two models, the one produced by the plus, I mean, the plus independent model and the plus specific model, we can see how some uh, some stereotypes specific for objectify uh, have appeared now. And there is also some semantics in here. So for instance, in order to have, so whenever we have here a, comp a composition between two classes, such as here, and the second class doesn't have an identifier, then this means that the second class is embedded into the first one. Okay, and this, this embed is, uh, is done through a notation, through a stereotype. Sorry, not an annotation, it's in Java, we are in, in a model. So in a model, this is, this is a stereotype. And as I said, this, this model is using the objectify profile that we can see down here. Okay, so this is there is a link between these two models where this one is, is a profile. This is the objectified profile that is provided by Google. So, and we can see here all the stereotypes that are defined uh, in the objectified profile. So now the next step. Well, this is this uh, plus specific model. This corresponds to the back end. Okay, we're go I'm going to show only the, the back end of, of the application. So what we also need is the service classes, okay, for the for the data store. For this we execute the, the fourth step and what we get is the same model but now we have a new package, so we have before the domain, which is this one. And now we also have service, so uh, for each of the entities we get a service class. Okay, that it, this is going to be important because we need these service classes in the in the code in the backend of the application. So the last step would be to obtain to obtain the code. Okay, we want to generate code uh, from from this application. We have extended the the accelerator generator, as I said before, from EML to Java. The this code generator is I mean you can extend it. It is based on on templates. So now. We'll, we again, what we do is we have a look at the stereotypes that are used in the model, and according to the stereotypes that are used here, we produce. I mean, we uh, we extend the code that is produced by the by the default code generator. So if we execute this last the last step. Then we get here in source generator, and we get some code here. This is the code for the domain classes and the service classes. So then we start to look at the item one. And we see how there are many imports for the for Google code. Okay, this has been included by us in the code generator. Uh, so now we need to consider notations such as identity or ID. So this is. An annotation that corresponds to the stereotype entity that I showed before, or also to identify the identifier attribute, there is the ID annotation, and so on. And so all these annotations were stereotypes in the model level. And then for the service classes, also here in the import that we are importing some uh, libraries from, from Objectify. And well, the, the in the service in the service class there are defined operations for true, so to create, read, update, and delete instances from the database. So whenever we access from the front end, we access the backend. We can we have here the instructions to put data into the database, to retrieve data, to delete data, etc. So this is in the in the code level. Let me also show you this in the model level. We start with the item service. We can see here several operations. Okay, to create an item, find an item, delete, etc. Okay, so I think I guess it was a bit messy to see this from. I mean, all at once. Let me quickly summarize again the steps I have done. So from the
From the source code with uh, Modisco, we obtain a class diagram okay, of the whole application. Then we have a look, well, we, uh, we have a model based slicer where we have a look at the annotations that are in the that belong that correspond to the uh, Java Persistent Library, JPA. Okay, and according to those annotations, we select a slice, we select a specific view of the application that contains only the domain classes and the relationships between them. Then we obtain a platform, so this is a platform specific model because uh, there is information regarding the technology underneath uh, in terms of stereotypes. Then we obtain a platform independent model from this platform specific model that we also refine. So, uh, having a look at the annotations and stereotypes, we refine the model and we abstract it from any technology specific detail. And then we go down again and what we do is we take into account the Objectify profile from the Google App Engine. And we now annotate the, the platform independent model with a stretch type specific to Objectify, okay, to the data store. And finally, by extending the UML to Java code generator, we are able to include all the details regarding Objectify into the final application code. As a case study, uh, we have used the pet store, okay? Uh, the, the application for the pet store was in this project, pet store application, okay? You can have a look at it here. And now, as a, as a very simple exercise, well, in the, in the artist project, we have other case studies. I mean, the pet store is the, the smallest one. Uh, Atos in Madrid, they have a, a huge application for detecting, for the early detection of earthquakes. So here we have provided you with, with a class diagram of this application. You can see here the class diagram of the application, okay? So you would be already here. This is the UML class diagram. So what I would like you to do is simply to follow the steps that I have followed. And you, can, you have here in Truffle Lounge, you have all the launch configurations, they are already already established. If you want to see the input and output for each of these steps, you can go to the run configurations here. And what each of these launch configurations are doing is launching model transformations. So you can go to each of them. So for instance, the first step for, the, for this exercise. And here you can have a look at the input and the, also the output of the transformations, okay, in case you want you want to know. So then I simply ask you to do a right click here, run as, and then select the first option, and then have a look at the model that, that are produced. They will be stored here in the models folder. And well, in the first step, it should be a simplification of this one. The second step, you should get a platform independent model. The first step, a platform specific model with Objectify profile until you get the the code generated. As I said before also, if you don't get if in the first step you get a model with, whose size is very small, which because we are obtaining this bug, we don't know why, we are looking into it. If it's very small, then download this one and use this as the output of the first step, please. And place it in the understanding folder and then you can continue the other steps. Yeah, you can start this and if you have any questions, just yeah, raise your hand and I can go there and have a look.
Uh, okay, so I think that uh, this is it, we are done here. Uh, let's hope that you will find these tools uh, interested. I uh, would like to thank you all for your participation and uh, for your pleased uh, activities of the evening. Tavern, uh, Tame sent us a mail at 6.30 we meet in the, in the lobby.